the bell icon to turn on notifications. In this section of the course, we're going to explore visualizations because really this is what Power BI is all about. And the way I like to look at this is I kind of split Power BI into three sections in my mind. We import and clean our data. We extract meaning from our data using DAX calculations and measures. And then we present that data using visualizations. And the idea behind visualizations is giving your customers, clients, managers, whoever you're presenting this data to, insight into the data, which in turn is going to help them make better business decisions. So currently, if we were to look at our table data, and this is the sales table, it's pretty difficult for us to analyze this data in its current state. I can't easily see things like which products have sold the most or which products are selling the best in different countries. It would be much better if I could create a chart or some kind of visualization that easily shows these metrics. And this is a really important point here. Before you even begin to build visualizations, it's worth taking a look at your data and working out exactly what's going to be of interest to your audience. What information are they interested in? What do they need to know? What metrics are important to them? And once you have all of that information, it's going to be a lot easier for you to decide what type of visualization you want to use to display which metric. So in this first lesson, I really just want to give you an introduction into visualizations so you understand what you're looking at. And then over the next few lessons, we'll run through some of the most popular so you can kind of get a feel as to how they work. So in order to build up your visualizations, you need to make sure that you are in report view. And you'll notice that I currently have one visualization on this page, and it's a very simple table visualization that's just showing the countries and the total profit. And we have the grand total at the bottom. So a very straightforward table with any of these visualizations. Once you add them, click on them to select, and then you can do things like resizing them to fit them into specific spaces, or you can just pick them up and drag and drop them to reposition. And there are lots of different types of visualizations that you can add to your page. And you'll see the entire gallery of them over on the right hand side in the visualizations area. And we have dipped in and out of here throughout the course. And now it's really time to focus our attention on these icons. Now notice all the different types that we have. When we hover over, we can see exactly what that visualization is. And some of these should look pretty familiar to you if you're used to using charts in Excel. So we have things like stacked bar charts, stacked column charts, clustered bar charts, clustered column charts, area charts, waterfall charts, funnel charts, even things like pie and donut charts. You have access to map charts and field map charts as well. And a really cool feature is this little gauge. And I'll show you how that works a bit later on. We have card visualizations, which we can add to our page as well as tables and matrix tables. And these all work in a very similar way with regards to how you add them onto your page. So if we just delete out this table that we have, I'm just going to select it and press the delete key on my keyboard. Let me give you an example of how you add a visualization and then add data. So let's do that table again. I'm going to go to my visualizations pane. And I'm just going to click on table. You can see that it just adds a blank table and it says select or drag fields to populate this visual. So once you have a visual added, even if it's blank, if you go across to just underneath where we have our visualizations, notice we have three icons just here, fields, format, and then analytics. Now fields is where you populate the information for the table. And you can see here we have a values area and it says add data fields here. So if I want to display the countries in the rows, what I would do is go over to my different tables of data. I'm going to find my countries table. I'm going to grab the country field. And I'm going to drag and drop it to this values area. So this is quite similar to Excel pivot tables. Now you can see I have all of the countries listed out and I can then add in my metric. So maybe I'm interested in seeing the total cost or the average price or maybe the total profit for each country. Whatever it is that I'm interested in, I just need to grab the correct field 
and that can be one from your table, or it might be a measure that you've created. I'm going to go for total profit, and you can either drag it up to that values area and place it underneath country, or if I just click the cross to get rid of it, you can drag it directly onto the visualization. And that is basically how all of these visualizations are structured. Now, you won't necessarily just see values for all of these visualizations. For example, when you're adding things like charts, you might have a few different fields that you need to complete for X axis, Y axis, legend and drag and drop the fields that you want to show. But in general, you'll always find the fields under the fields list just here. Once you have your data in the visualization, you're then probably going to want to format it, maybe make it look a little bit nicer or match your brand colors. And that is where we would switch across to the format area. Now we'll say you have to make sure that you have the visualization selected first, click on the formatting button, and this opens up a whole load of different ways that we can format this particular table. And you can literally expand these and customize everything on this visualization. And we're going to get familiar with each of these and the kinds of things they do as we go through this section. Now, one important thing to note here, which I find is super useful because there are so many different options in here. Sometimes you find yourself scrolling up and down, expanding different categories, desperately searching for whatever it is that you're looking for. So something I find really useful is this search bar at the top if I'm looking for something specific. Maybe I want to align these column headings in this table to the center. So instead of expanding all of these, trying to find that option, I can click in search, type in alignment, and it's going to pull back everything from all of those categories related to alignment. And I find this a lot easier because I can see here immediately column headings. OK, this is the alignment that deals with these column headings. If I scroll down, maybe I want to align the actual fields. I've got my options there for that. Or maybe I want to align the title. So basically all of my alignment options are together because I've searched for them. So I can come into column headings. I can say I want them aligned to the center and you can now see that those have shifted across. Now I actually don't want them in the center. So let's put that back to auto, which is going to push them to the left. But just be aware of that. If I double click and type in format, it's going to pull back all of the options that I have for formatting. So using that search can sometimes make it a lot quicker when you're looking for specific items within your visualization to format. Now, the final thing I want you to note here before we jump into creating our own visualizations and formatting them is if you're not clicked on a visualization and you're just clicked on that page background, when you go to your visualizations pane and the format area, Notice what we have in here. We now have our options for formatting the page as opposed to the visualization. So for example, if I wanted to change the background of this page, I would need to go into wallpaper. And this is a little bit misleading because we do have a page background section just here, but the actual page color is controlled underneath wallpaper. I could change that to something like blue to set that page. So the main point I'm trying to make here is that if you want to format the visualization, make sure that you're clicked on it. If you're not, it's going to be that page background that you're actually changing. So let's start out by talking about a really popular visualization, and that is the matrix table. Now, currently on this page, I have just a table. And you'll see that there are two icons in the visualizations pane. This one just here is for the table and this one next to it is for the matrix table. So what is the difference between these two visualizations? Well, the main difference is that the table is kind of a flat structure and it can display one dimension of data. For example, currently we are showing the country and then the total profit for each country. I could grab a, another field. So let's go for let's go for total cost, drag and drop that into the values area. And that's going to give me another column that shows the total cost by country. And I could carry on going, adding different columns. But each time I'm just summarizing these totals by the country. 
if I wanted to add in a second dimension, so maybe I wanted to summarize the total profit and total cost by country and also by year, I would need to create a matrix table. And a matrix table is kind of similar to an Excel pivot table. So let's click on matrix and I'm going to drag this up next to my table. So now what I can do here is add a second dimension in. And notice now that I'm clicked on the matrix table, if we take a look at our fields, I have rows, columns and values. So I need to drag in at least three fields to create this matrix table. So what do I want displayed in my rows? Well, maybe this is where I want the countries. So I'm going to go to my countries table, which is up here, grab the country and place that in rows. And there we go. What do I now want in my columns? Well, maybe I want to see the years. So I'm going to go down to my dates table, grab that year field and place that in columns. And now I can see 2016 to 2019. All that's left is my values in the middle. So what am I interested in here? Well, I'm interested in seeing the total profit by country across these years. So I'm going to grab the total profit field and remember you can drag it into values or you can just drop it straight on to the table. I can drag that out to resize and I can see that I now have the data summarized in a way that's a little bit more meaningful. So that is the difference between a table and a matrix table. A matrix table has two dimensions as opposed to one. Another cool thing about matrix tables is the ability to drill down through information. So I'm going to reorder my matrix table and we're going to display some different information in here. So currently I have my country in rows. I'm going to get rid of that. So let's click on the cross to remove that. I'm also going to remove years, but I'm going to keep total profit in here. And this time I want to summarize by category. So let's drop that into rows, but also by product. So I'm going to grab product and drop that underneath category in that rows area. And then for the columns, let's do let's do year again. So let's scroll up, grab year and drop that into columns. Now notice the difference here. Can you see next to each of the categories? I now have this little plus symbol. So that is letting me know that there's more information hidden underneath here. And again, this works very similar to Excel pivot tables. If you take a look at my values, you can see I have category and then I'm summarizing by product. So if I click the plus next to beverages, it's going to open up all of the products that belong to the beverages category. And then I can see the related information. Notice also just above, I have four icons here, which are going to help me when it comes to drilling down through my different categories. Now, currently I have these plus and minus symbols turned on. So it's reasonably straightforward for people to understand what these are. Most people know that if you click on a plus, it's going to expand something out. But what about if I want people to be able to double click in order to expand these? Currently, if I double click on beverages, nothing happens. But what I could do is turn on the ability to drill down. So let's click this icon. It's going to turn black and that means that if I now double click on beverages, it's going to expand that group. If I click on drill up, that's going to collapse up that category. Now this is particularly useful if you don't have these plus and minus symbols turned on. And this is something you'll find under the format area for this specific type of table. And this would probably be where I would use this search bar at the top because I don't want to have to go through every single category looking for the one little toggle that's going to turn off these plus icons. So in search, I'm just going to put a plus in there. Look what it finds plus minus icons on or off. If I click this slider to turn them off, they now disappear. So the way I can now drill down through these items is simply by double clicking on the category and it's going to expand that out. So this is particularly useful if you don't have those plus and minus icons turned on. Now I'm going to have those turned on because they don't take up a great deal of room and I just like to make it super obvious for people. The next icon is if I have multiple levels to my hierarchy, this is going to take me to the next one. And the final icon here is going to expand all of these categories 
down one level in the hierarchy. So if I want a quick way to be able to expand all of these, I can click on this icon and it's going to expand everything out and I can then resize my table. So don't forget about these little buttons at the top when it comes to organizing these different categories of hierarchical information. Let's take a look at some of the other formatting options that we have underneath here. And there are so many of them, I'm not going to go through all of them, but let's take a look at some of the main points. So if we expand general, this is where you can come to define the position of your table. For example, the exact width and the exact height of this table. And this is sometimes useful to define if you need to fit your table into an exact space you can ensure it's always that size. And if the data breaches that width, for example, you're going to get scroll bars come up on your table. So much like I have a scroll bar just here for my data set. So let's collapse general back up again. The next one down is style. And currently you can see that the style I have applied is just the default style. But we have a few different choices in here. For example, minimal. That basically turns off those banded rows and adds a little bit of cell padding. So essentially we have a little bit more room for each of these numbers. And I would say that minimal is probably the one I use most often. I think it's quite a nice clean look and it doesn't distract away from the data. Some of these, as you'll see, are a little bit crazy. So we've got one there, bold header, quite difficult to see. Alternating rows, so that's adding in your banded rows there. We've got flashy rose, which is a blue color. And remember, these colors can be customized. You're just really selecting your base template for the style. So go through these and see which one you like. I'm going to stick with minimal. The next thing we have is the grids. So this basically relates to the grid lines that you can see in this table. You can choose to have the vertical grid off or on. So currently mine is off. If I turn that on, you're going to see I now get vertical lines. And I actually quite like that. I can choose my vertical grid color. So if I want these to be blue, for example, I can have those blue lines running down. I can change the grid thickness. So if I want them a bit wider, I can adjust that just there. And I've got basically the same options for the horizontal grid. So if I want to change that to the same blue color, I could do that as well. We've also got things like the outline color and the outline weight. So go through some of these options, have a little play around and see what you like. We have a column headers section. So again, this is where we can come to change things like the font color for our headings. And just to show you what this looks like, let's do, let's do a purple color. You can see here now I have at the top here, my header labels have changed to purple. Now I don't like that. Let's do a darker blue just to keep in with the color scheme that we have going on. I can also change the background color. So if I want them to be maybe a light shaded gray, I could do that also. I can change the font family, the text size, how they're aligned, so on and so forth. So all of the options in there to customize the look and feel of those column headings. And of course, we have similar options for our row headers as well. So if I want to change the font color, background color, the outline, so on and so forth. Now, this option here is something I would direct your attention to where we have stepped layout. So remember, we have a hierarchy system in this table. We have our category and then we have the products. And currently in the way that this is displaying, I have the category at the top here and then the products are underneath very slightly indented. But what about if I wanted these products in their own separate column? So this would be similar to tabular layout if you were using Excel pivot tables. Well, if I would like them in another column, I can turn off step layout and as soon as I do that, take a look at what happens. They now have their own product column. So it might be that you prefer this format. If you do, turn off step layout. Now I feel this takes up a bit of unnecessary space, so I'm going to turn my step layout back on to organize them like that. We can then format our values. So now we're dealing with the actual values within this table. And again, all of the options that you would expect, we can change the color, the background color, we can customize our banded rows. Now, if you look at this, my banded rows are turned on, but because of the style that I've used, the minimal style, my minimal style doesn't include banded rows. So even though these are on, I'm not seeing them. So just be aware of that. 
We've then got subtotals. So with matrix tables, by default, your subtotals are going to show at the top. So I can see where we have categories. I can then see the subtotals for each of the years. Now, if you don't want subtotals on, you can simply toggle this slider off and they're going to disappear. You can even change the position of these subtotals. So again, I'm somebody who prefers to read my subtotals at the bottom of each group. That's just naturally how my eye goes. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can see that we have an option here for row subtotal position. Currently that's set to top. Let's change that to bottom and it's going to move those down. What we can also do is if we want to change the label, so currently mine just says total, I can change the row subtotals label here. So maybe I want to say something like uh, category total, and that makes it just a little bit easier to understand. We've got the same here for column subtotals, so I can turn those off and it's going to get rid of that column, or I can keep those turned on. So lots of different customizations in there as well. We've got similar options in here for grand totals, and then we have a field formatting section. And this is where I can choose the units that I want to display these totals in. So if I switch this to, let's say, thousands, you can see what that's going to look like. It changes all of those values. I could change it to millions and I get a more concise version of my totals. So if I was trying to save a little bit of space here, I could switch this to millions. Now I'm going to keep mine on none just to stick with my original formatting. Notice you can also adjust the decimal places in here. I can change the background color of my values if I want to. So maybe I want to do a light blue and that's going to shade all of those. And I can change things like the alignment. So if I want the center aligned, I can change that from here also. Now I'm going to switch this back to white to keep everything consistent and easy to read. In the last lesson, we were walking through how to format this matrix table. So let's pick up from where we left off. Conditional formatting, I'm going to skip over for the moment because we're going to do that in a later lesson. Let's jump to title. Now, currently, I don't have a title showing on this matrix table. So if I toggle it on, I can then add some title text. So what is this table representing? Well, it's total profit by year, oops, by year and category. And that's going to give me a nice little title for this table. I can choose the font color. So I'm going to change this to a dark blue. I can even choose the background color. So maybe I want this to stand out a little bit. Let's do a light blue color at the top there. And I can change my alignment, my text size, and even my font family. So let's give this, let's change this to Cambria. I then have some options to change the background of the table. So I can choose a color and I can set the transparency of that color. So if I had something like purple in the background, I can then drag this transparency slider so that that isn't as intense. Now, I don't particularly like that. I think it looks a little bit amateurish and I like to keep things as clean as possible. So let's go back to white. I can lock the aspect ratio. So if I turn this on, it means that if I was to resize this table, it's going to resize this table evenly. I have some options for the border. So if I want a border around my table, I can turn that on. And then, of course, I can choose the color and how many pixels I want that border to be. I can even have a shadow on my table if I want to. I'm not going to bother with that. And then finally, at the bottom here, we have tool tips. Now, I currently have this turned off. We're going to talk more about tool tips in a later lesson because these can be super useful. So for now, we're going to skip over that. And then finally, we have visual header. And this relates to these icons running across the top. So you can even customize the look and feel of these. I can change the background color. I can change the border. I can even change the icon color. So if I wanted these to match the overall theme of my table, maybe I want to make them a dark blue color and those are going to change color. And I can choose which icons I want to show up here as well. So I don't necessarily have to have all of these showing. I can go through and use the slider to toggle them off or on. So that is a very quick run through of all of the customization options that you have regarding matrix tables.
Now you've seen them in matrix tables, they take on a similar format for every single visualization. So have a good look through these, play around with them, find out what they do, and then you should be pretty much set when it comes to formatting for whichever visualization you add. One part of the formatting options that we kind of skipped over in the last lesson was conditional formatting. And that's because there is quite a bit to conditional formatting. So I wanted to dedicate an entire lesson to how you can apply it to your visualizations. So we're still formatting this matrix table. Let's jump down to conditional formatting and expand that out and see what we've got. Now you might be more familiar with conditional formatting in an application like Excel. And if you are, then you're probably gonna have no problems using it in Power BI because it is effectively the same thing. Now, if you're not familiar with conditional formatting, the main purpose of it is to help you highlight important data in your tables. So again, if I look at my data that I have here, remember I have my products summarized by the category that they belong to and also the year. And we're summarizing by total profit. So if I want to very quickly be able to pick out of this data the highest values and the lowest values, I could use conditional formatting to do that. And in Power BI, we have three types of conditional formatting we can apply. And again, if we relate this back to something like Excel, we can apply a color scale, we can apply data bars, or we can apply icon sets. So let's take a look at each of them so that you understand how they work. So we've expanded that conditional formatting format area, and we can see that we're applying our conditional formatting to the total profit. So basically all of the values that we have within this table. Now, conditional formatting won't include the totals by default, so you don't need to worry about that because totals can throw off the accuracy of your conditional formatting. So fortunately, it doesn't get applied to those totals. Now, the first little slider we have here is background color. And this is basically a bit of a strange name for color scales. Again, if you've used those in Excel, you'll know that they're kind of like a heat map. Now, if we turn this slider on, you'll notice that immediately the colors change in my matrix table because currently Power BI is just applying the default conditional formatting. So the thing I would do straight away is jump into advanced controls because this is where you can really customize what you're seeing in here. So the format that we're using is a color scale. We're applying it to only the values and it's based on our total profit. We're summarizing by the sum of the total profit and where it has default formatting as zero, what this basically means is that if you have a blank value in your data, the formatting will be applied as if there was a zero value in there. We can then choose how we want this formatting to apply. And you can see we have minimum and maximum. So it's going to highlight or shade the background of the lowest value in our data in this light blue color and the highest value in a dark blue color. And this is the default that's already been applied to my data. So if we just cancel out of here a second, you can see that these values in this dark blue color are the highest values. And then we kind of work our way down in shading towards the lighter blue and the lightest color blue is going to be our lowest values. So that's kind of how conditional formatting works. Also note that for the blank cells that we have here, those have been highlighted in the lightest blue color. So if we jump back into advanced controls, I can change the colors. So if, so if I don't want this to be light blue and dark blue, I can simply click the drop down and choose my own colors. Also by default, it's going to apply this color scale based on the lowest value that it finds in your data. And the same with this one, the highest value that it finds in the data. Now you could even in here change this and set your own custom values for the minimum and maximum. And the shading will be applied according to the values that you've set in here. So this is a way of customizing this conditional formatting to suit your needs. Now, most of the time you're going to want to choose lowest value and highest value to see where those values fall within that range. Now, if you click on diverging, that gives you a center value as well. 
And once again, this color can be customized and you could choose custom from in here also. So if we add in that middle value and click on OK, let's see what we get. So with that diverging middle value turned on, this is actually a little bit easier for me to read. So I can see quite clearly here where my lowest values are because they're all in light blue going through that color gradient up to my highest values, which are showing in the darker blue. And remember, you can always jump in here and change these colors if you're finding them a bit difficult to understand. So that is how you can use the background color, the color scale. If you want to get rid of it, we can simply toggle this slider off. Now you can do a similar thing, but this time using the font color as opposed to the background color. So if you would rather that the font for the values changes as opposed to the background color, you could toggle this on, go to your advanced controls and you have similar options just here. So I could set this to, and you're probably gonna to wanna to do slightly darker colors for this so that it shows up. Let's do a dark red and a dark green. So I'm gonna to go to more colors for this. Let's drag our slider down to the green and we'll go for quite a dark green. And let's click on okay. Now still you see that is quite difficult to see. So you have to be careful with your colors here if you really want those values to stand out. And this is why in general, I prefer to use the background color because I just find it a little bit easier to read. But that option is there if you prefer it. The next thing you have here is data bars. So if we turn these on, these are little representations of the value within that cell. And you can choose to show these bars with the value displaying, or you can choose to show just the bar only. So let's jump into advanced controls for our data bars. And you can see right at the top, the first option is show bar only. So if I select that and click on OK, it's actually going to remove the values and just leave a representation of the values in the form of that bar. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, when on earth would that be useful? And the scenario that I tend to think of is if maybe you work in HR and you're presenting data that's quite sensitive, maybe it relates to employee salaries, you might want to give people a general idea of where that salary falls within a range without showing them the employee's actual salary. So when information is sensitive, sometimes this is a really good way of getting around that. Now we are going to show the values. Let's jump into advanced controls again and just take a tick out of that box. And the same principle applies here. Power BI is looking for the lowest value it finds in our range of data and also the highest value. And the length of the bar is defined by where the value in the cell falls within that range. And this is a really important point to note when it comes to data bars. People tend to think that this bar kind of represents almost like 100% but it doesn't. The bar is very much in relation to the lowest and highest numbers. So the highest value in this table, and I think that might possibly be this one at the top here, this one is essentially 100%. And everything else is kind of defined by that. So this one just here is kind of like a percentage of the highest value. Now you could get these data bars to display as a representation of the percentage of the grand total, as opposed to how they relate to the highest and lowest values in this data. And if you wanted to do something like that, you would need to create a measure, first of all, to work out what the total is as a percentage and what the total profit for each product is as a percentage as well. So it is possible to do something like that, but just be very aware as to what that bar is actually representing. And then the final option that we have down here is icon sets. So let's turn these on and let's immediately jump straight into advanced controls. Now this allows you to display an icon again, depending on what the value is within the cells. So we can see that we're applying our icons to the values only. It's based on the total profit field or the sum of total profit. Our icon is going to show to the left of the data and we could change that if we wanted to and our icon alignment is going to be to the top. We can then choose the icon sets that we'd like to use in our data. And we have icon sets that have three icons, sets that have four icons, and also sets that have five icons. And currently the one that I have selected is a three icon icon set. And this makes an important difference when it comes to understanding what these icons are representing. If you take a look underneath where we have rules, 
This is how Power BI is assigning an icon to a value. And you'll see that because I've chosen a three icon icon set, it's essentially looking at all of the values in my data and dividing them up into thirds. And you can see here, we have them set to percentages, 33%, 67 and 100. So this represents thirds in our data. Now we have quite large numbers in our data set. So the best way to explain this would be, imagine a number like 12. One to four would be the bottom third, four to eight would be the middle third, and eight to 12 would be the top third. And it will assign icons based on that. So this is effectively what it's calculating here. It's looking at my data with my large numbers and dividing it into thirds, and it's using that to assign the icons. Now, again, I can jump in here and get a little bit more specific about how I want Power BI to divide up this data. So for this first line, I don't have percentages in my data. I have numbers. So I'm going to change this top line to numbers. And I'm going to say if the value is greater than or equal to zero, but is less than, and I'm going to change this to 400,000. If that is true, then it's going to assign that red icon. Let's go to the next line, change these two numbers. If the value is greater than or equal to, and this time we're going to say 400,000, but is less than 600,000, then the value will be assigned this yellow triangle. And then the final row, let's change these two numbers, and we'll say if the value is greater than or equal to 600,000, but is less than 2 million. Then we want a green icon. So you can customize all of these. And then when we click on OK, and this makes it a lot easier for me to read. So I know that anything that has a green circle next to it is greater than 600,000, but less than 2 million. Anything that has a yellow triangle is greater than 400,000, but less than 600,000. And then anything with red is somewhere between zero and 400,000. So don't be afraid to go in there and customize those icons. Now, if we jump back in here one last time, that was all based on a three icon icon set. Now, if we were to choose something like a four icon icon set, you can see that it now divides it into quarters, essentially. And with a five icon set, it's going to divide it into fifths. So just bear that in mind. The number of icons that you choose has an effect on how your data is going to be broken up. So conditional formatting is a great way of making your data more readable and easily highlighting values that are important to you. Now let's take a look at some other popular visualizations in Power BI. So if you remember in the last lesson, we created a matrix table and we've been through and applied different types of formatting to this table. But now what if I decide that I want to change this from a matrix table to something like a bar chart or a clustered column chart? Well, it's pretty simple. All you need to do here is click on your current visualization and then over in the visualizations pane, you just need to select the new visualization that you want to apply. Now, this first row up here are all different kinds of bar chart. So we have a stacked bar chart, a stacked column chart, a clustered bar chart, a clustered column chart, a 100% stacked bar chart and a 100% stacked column chart. So for this one, I'm going to go for a very simple clustered column chart. So all I need to do is click and it's going to swap that visualization. So now I have my years running across the bottom and my total profit down the side. But notice that when I had my table, it was showing me the product and the category. But because of the type of chart I've replaced it with, I'm now just seeing my profits summarized by the year. So let's jump in and take a look at our fields. Now you can see here what it's done. In the axis, we have category, product and year. But I can't display all of these on one axis. So it's just given me the year. I have total profit as my values, which is absolutely fine. But I also have a legend just here. And currently this is empty. So what I'd probably want to do is grab one of these items from the axes and move it into legend. 
So again, this is going to depend on what you want to summarize by. Do I want to summarize by category or by product? So I'm going to do category. I'm just going to drag that down to the legend. And then I could just click the cross to get rid of product from the axes because currently it's not showing me any information. If I drag that back out of legend and back up to axes and drag product down here instead, I get a completely different visualization. Now for me, this is a little bit too much data to be displaying in a visual. I like to keep things fairly small and easy to understand. So I'm going to get rid of product and we're just going to use the category in the legend. Now that I have my data set like this, I could choose any of these other chart visualizations and everything should work nicely. So if I choose stacked bar chart, that's what we're going to get. Stacked column chart, clustered bar chart, we've seen the clustered column. Then we have a 100% stacked bar chart and a 100% stacked column chart. And if we set this back to a cluster column chart, we can then go into our formatting area and start to make some changes to customize this chart. So let's expand general. And again, I'm not going to go through all of these because many of these are kind of similar to the ones that we looked at in the matrix table. So we have all of our positioning options. I'm not going to change anything there. When it comes to the legend, I have this turned on, but I can choose the position. So currently I have it at the top. I could choose to have it at the bottom over on the left or on the right. And I also have some other options here. So top center. And I quite like that one. I think I'm going to leave it in the center just there. I can choose if I want the title of the legend to show. So where it says category, if I don't want that there, I can turn that off, which is going to save me a little bit of space. I could even change the name of the legend just here if I wanted to do that. And I can customize the color, the font and the text size that I'm using. We then have some options for our X axes. For example, we can define the start and end points. And again, we can customize the color, the text size. So if I take this up, you can see that those titles, the year titles are getting bigger. So I'm going to take those down to let's set those to 12 points. And I can also do things like adjust the inner padding. So currently this is set to 20%. If I take this all the way up to 43%, you can see that that increases the space between the bars. So I can essentially control this gap width. And I think I'm going to set it to that. I can choose if I want to display the axis title, in this case year, by turning that off or on. I can change the title color and also what that axis title says. So mine's set to auto, which means it's just going to use the field name. And in this case, I'm fine with that. I can choose to turn grid lines off or on. Currently mine are off. If I toggle those on, I don't know if you can see because they're very faint in the background. I do have some grid lines. So let me make those grid lines a bit darker so that you can see exactly what those look like. And there we go. You might want to leave those on or you might not. I can then make the same changes to the Y axis. So I'm going to change the text size from 9 to 12 just to match the other axes. And I can change my display unit. So I have mine currently displaying as millions. If I wanted to, I could choose to display as thousands instead, billions, trillions, or I could say none, which is going to give me the actual values just here. Now, just to save a bit of space, I am going to set these back to millions. Let's move down. Again, I've got my grid lines on, but I want to make those the same color as the vertical grid lines so that I can see those horizontal grid lines. The next option I have is the zoom slider. Now, currently I have this turned off. If I turn this on, it's going to put these bars underneath and I can choose to show my zoom slider on the X axis or the Y axis. So if I turn off the X axis, I just have one on the Y. I can then use this zoom slider to kind of zoom in on my data. And you'll see as I do that, it's adjusting the granularity of the information that I can see. So if you have quite a lot of complex data and you really want to get into exactly where this bar lies, you can use this zoom slider. Now I don't want to have that turned on, so let's just turn that off. We then have data colors, and this is where we can define the color of these bars. So I'm going to change these and I think I'm going to have a bit of a purple theme here. So let's go for this 
aubergine color. I'm going to change food to this pink color. And then finally, pastries is going to be, let's go for a lighter purple color. I can then choose if I want to display data labels. Now let's turn this on and see what we get. Well, this is really cool because it shows us exactly what each of these values are. Again, I can choose the color. I can choose the display unit. So I'm going to keep these on millions. I can choose the orientation. So maybe I want to have those going vertically instead. And I can also choose the position. So currently these are showing on the outside end of the bar, but if I wanted to, I could put those on the inside end of the bar. And I think that looks a lot nicer. And I'm going to take this text size up. Let's make these slightly bigger. I'm going to take it up to 10 points. And I could also customize the font that I'm using. Now plot area refers to this blank space behind where we have our bars. Now in general, I like to keep this clean so that the data really stands out. But if you wanted to, you could add an image. So let's click add image. And as this is coffee shop data, I'm going to choose this image just here. I'm going to choose the image fit because I can only see a little part of it here. So let's go for fill. And then what I can do is adjust the transparency. So I can take this all the way down and make it a lot lighter. And I'm probably going to go even more transparent. And this in general is the only way that I would use a background image. You really don't want it to distract from your data, but it can look really effective. So my advice is to make that image as transparent as possible so that it doesn't detract from the information that you're trying to convey. Again, we have our title, which we currently have turned on. And we've got our title text in here. Obviously, you can modify that. I'm going to change the colors so that it matches my chart. So let's change the background color. First of all, I'm going to go for this dark purple and the font color. We're just going to change that to white. And of course, I can change that alignment if I want to. Let's put it in the middle and let's make it a little bit bigger. Background will allow us to change the background color of the chart. And just to show you what that looks like, if I was to change this to gray, we get a completely different look and feel. And again, we can adjust the transparency of this color overlay. Now, I think that gray is a bit too dark. Let's go for something like a very pale gray color. And I might even make that a little bit more transparent. A couple of other options I might want to change in here. I could choose to add a border to my entire chart. So let's toggle that on. And if we click away, we can see what that border currently looks like. We can change the color and the radius. Now I'm going to turn the board off because the final option I want to show you in here is this tool tip area. And again, this is something that we skipped over in the last lesson. Now tool tips are very useful. If I hover my mouse over one of these bars, I'm going to get this little tool tip pop up, which is showing me the figures, the information in this chart. So I can see the year, the category of this bar, and the total profit as an exact value. So in general, I always like to have these tooltips enabled. Now you can customize what you're seeing in those tooltips, but you don't do it from this formatting area. You do it over in the fields area. So maybe if I scroll down, you'll see that you have a tooltips area at the bottom here. You can drag and drop fields, and then that information will then appear in the tooltip when you hover over the bar. So maybe I want to be able to see what the total costs are as well as the total profit. So what I'm going to do here is grab the total cost field from the sales area and drag that into tooltips. And because I have my tooltips turned on in formatting, now when I hover over, I can also see that total cost. So tooltips are a great way of seeing additional information. So that is pretty much all the customization I want to do here. And all of these formatting options pretty much apply to all of these charts on the top row. I also have other charts that I could switch to. I have a line chart in here. I think we're all reasonably familiar with a line chart. We have area charts, stacked area charts, and also things like line and stacked column charts. So if I want to display two series of data, I could switch to a line and clustered column charts, but then I would need to go in and modify some of these options. For example, I can see that my data labels are now showing in gray and they don't really stand out. So let's expand data label 
and I'm going to make those white. And if we go back to fields, currently I can only see the columns, but I've selected to display a line chart as well. So if we take a look at my fields, I can see here in line values, I don't currently have anything. So again, if I also wanted to see how the total costs relate to the total profit, I could grab that total cost field and drag it into line values, and that's going to display on my chart as well. Now that I've done that, when I go back into formatting, I'm going to have some additional options in here related to that line chart. For example, if I go down to data colors, you'll see that now I have an additional legend item in here for total cost, which is this blue line. You'll also notice I have an additional formatting option in here as well called shapes. So if I wanted to, I could turn on the shaded area and that's basically going to shade everything below this line. I can also choose if I want to show markers. So if I click this, it's going to show me those markers at the end. I can choose my marker shape. So let's change that to a diamond. My marker color. So maybe I want these to stand out a little bit more. So let's do a nice bright yellow. So I'm going to move to the yellow section and let's do something like that. And this is pretty cool where we have stepped. If I turn this on, take a look at what happens to this line. Instead of it being a linear line like we're used to seeing in most charts, we can have this stepped effect instead. So just remember that if you do change the chart type and you add something else in like a line chart, then you're going to need to go back in and review your formatting options because there's going to be some extra things in there that you're going to need to change. Another cool visual that you can use to display data is the card visualization. And I usually see cards being used in Power BI dashboards to show an overview of the information on the dashboard. So a high level overview. And these might be the key metrics that you really just want people to be able to see really easily. And you normally find these cards will be at the top of the dashboard showing your important key metrics. So for example, I'm going to use some measures and add them to cards. So let's add on some cards because they're super simple and really effective. So let's go across to our visualizations. And when you're looking for cards, it's this one just here, which has the one, two, three on it. Now, if I click on the card, when I'm still clicked on my column chart, take a look at what happens. And this is something you have to be really careful of. I find myself doing this all the time. Let's click back to undo that. Make sure that you're clicked on the page and not on any existing visuals. Let's now add our card. There it is at the top. And by default, it's going to resize itself so that it's the same width as the visual below. So in this first card, I'm going to use one of my key measures because I want people to easily be able to see what our total costs have been. So I'm going to drag total costs. I can drag it to this fields area or directly onto the card. Let go. And it's as simple as that. Now I'm going to resize this card so I can easily fit some more on. Let's click away, click our card again. This time I'm going to display the total profit on this card. Let's drag and drop that measure. And again, I'm going to drag this in. Now, when it comes to the sizing of these cards, if accuracy is very important to you here and you want to make them all exactly the same size, we can do this through formatting. If we expand general, this is where we can define the width and the height. So if I want to make this one exactly the same width and height as this one, I could click on it make a note of this and then just copy those settings across. So 264 and 244. Let's change that to 264 and 244. And they're exactly the same. A different way that I could go about this is I could select this first one, control C to copy, control V to paste. So now they're exactly the same size. And all I need to do now is replace the total cost with the total profit field. So two different ways that you can ensure that these cards are exactly the same size as each other. Now notice when I drag this over, I'm also getting those alignment guides 
which is really going to help me when it comes to aligning these on the page. Let's add another card. I'm going to copy and paste the last one, drag it across. And this time we're going to replace total profit with total sales quantity. Drag and drop onto the card. So these are a very effective way of displaying summary information at a glance. And of course, all of these can be formatted in a very similar way. Make sure you have the card selected, click on format, and then we can go through our different options. So some of the things I'm going to change here, let's take a look. Now with this data label, I can choose my units. So currently I'm displaying in millions. I could say none. That's not going to work too well. I'm going to change that back to millions. The category. Well, if I turn the category off, it's going to remove that label underneath. Now, it's actually quite useful being able to see what exactly that number represents. So we're going to leave that on. But I can make some modifications. So I might want to make this a lot bigger than it currently is. So I'm going to take this up to 18 points. I could add an additional title if I wanted to. I can change the background colors. So maybe I want to change this background color to let's do that dark aubergine color. And because I've done that, I want to go back and just change some of this text. So we're going to change this text here to white. And we're going to go up and we're also going to change the data label color to white as well, just so that stands out a little bit more. And I can give it a border, a shadow. I can add more into that tooltip as well. So currently when I hover over this card, I don't get a tooltip come up. So I need to turn on tooltip. And then when I hover over, I can now see that information, the total cost. Now, what if I want to copy this formatting quickly across to these other two cards so they all look exactly the same? Well, fortunately, I don't have to go through each one applying those settings. What I can do is click on the first card up on the home ribbon, use my format painter, click it once and click to apply that formatting. Let's do it again. Format painter, click to apply. Now that I've done that, I can see this one isn't quite in alignment. So let's change that and put those together at the top. If I want to resize these all in one go, I can select them all by holding down the shift key right click and group that makes them one object. And then I can use this handle to resize them all in one go. Just remember that once they're grouped, you need to right click and ungroup them again. If you want them to be individual cards, which you can then move around independently. The next type of chart I'd like to show you is a map chart. And in Power BI, we have two different kinds of map chart that we can use the regular map or the filled map. So let me show you the difference between these two. Now for this, just to give ourselves a bit more room, I'm going to create another blank page. So at the bottom where we have page one, I'm going to click the plus symbol to give me page two. And remember, you can rename these pages simply by right clicking selecting rename. I'm just going to call this map charts and let's give page and let's give page one a rename as well. We'll call this summary. Now map charts are great for displaying geographical data. And it just so happens that in our data set, we do have a countries table for our stores. So this type of data is going to be perfect for a map chart. So let's see how this works. From the visualizations pane, I'm going to click on this globe icon and you can see as I hover over, it says map and the one next to it is the filled map. And there is a bit of a difference between these two. So let's go for the map. First of all, let's click to add. It's going to be blank until we add in some fields. So let's now take a look at what we need to add. The first field here is location. So this is where you're going to want to grab your field that contains your geographical information and drop it into here. So for me, I think I'm going to go for country. Let's drag and drop that in. Notice straight away what is happening. Now, if I make this map chart a bit bigger so it's easier to see, it's basically picked up all of the locations in my data set and it's plotted these little bubbles on those locations. Now, at the moment, all of these bubbles are the same size. 
And the idea behind this chart is that you can represent values such as total cost, total profit by the size of the bubble. And you'll notice here, as we go through these fields, there's one at the bottom that represents size. So this is where we can drop the field that is going to define the size of our bubble. So maybe I am interested in, let's go for total profit again. I'm going to drop that into size. And now those bubbles have resized depending on the profit per location. Now, one of the drawbacks of this map chart is, particularly if you have locations that are fairly close together, sometimes these bubbles can start to overlap and things can look a little bit confusing. So just bear that in mind. We are going to make some adjustments, which is going to make this a bit easier to read. But in some cases, particularly if you have lots of bubbles plotted, it's going to be a little bit too chaotic to display your data effectively. Now, I do have some other fields that I could fill in here, and one of them is the legend. So let me just show you what happens if I add a field to this legend area. Let me grab category and drag it into legend. And now you can see each of these bubbles divided up by the different categories, beverages, food and pastries. I could get rid of that and choose something else. So what about year? Let's drag that into legend. And now I can see those figures divided up 2016 to 2019. So you really can display some nice information on this type of chart. Now, for me, I find this level of detail a little bit confusing. I prefer to use this type of chart when I just want to represent the total profit for each of the locations. So I'm going to remove year and just leave it as a plain bubble. Remember, when you hover over these bubbles, again, you're going to get that tooltip information. And we can always add more information into these tooltips by dragging more fields to this tooltip section at the bottom. So maybe I want to grab one of my measures here and also display the average profit. So let's drop that into tooltips. Now when I hover over, I've got my total profit and my average profit. Now let's take a look at some of the formatting options we have for this type of chart. So let's click on format and expand general. Once again, we have some positioning options in here. I don't think I'm going to change anything in there. Let's go straight down to data colors. Now, this is where you can change the color of that bubble to match maybe the theme that you're using. So let's go for, I'm going to go for this dark red color again. Now, if you want to have each country's bubble represented with a different color, you can definitely do that as well. All you need to do is toggle on show all, and then you can go through and you can define a color for the bubble for each of these locations. Now, I'm going to leave mine all on purple just to save a little bit of time. If we go to category, this is where I can add some data labels effectively. So if I toggle this on, it's going to show me those countries data labels. And again, this can get a little bit chaotic if you have lots of locations very close to each other. Let's go down to bubbles. Well, this is where we can change the size of the bubbles. So if I want to make those a little bit smaller, I can do that which sometimes makes them a little bit more manageable. Now I'm going to take those up to about 17. Let's expand map controls. Well, I currently have auto zoom on. But if I turn this off and then choose to display zoom buttons instead, you can see that I can then control the zoom much like you would something like Google Maps. I can click the plus to zoom in the plus again. And then I can just drag that map around if I want to take a closer look at a particular region. So this sometimes works a little bit better if you have lots of overlapping bubbles because you do still have the ability to zoom in and see those a little bit clearer. I then have access to different map styles. So currently this theme is the road theme. But in this drop down, we have Arial, which looks pretty cool, I must say. And then we have a dark theme. Can't really see too much there. A light theme, which is quite nice. And then we have a grayscale theme as well. So choose whichever one you like the best and showcases your data in the best way. Now, I think I'm going to go for Arial because I quite like that one. And now that I've done that, I think I'm going to make my bubbles a little bit bigger. So let's just increase those. Like so. Perfect. And then most of these other options we've already covered in other chart types. So we can customize things like the title, the background, the aspect ratio. We can add a border, a shadow, and you've seen how we can change those tooltips. 
Now for this title, I think I am actually going to change this. I'm going to change the font color to white and we're going to have the background color just so it suits the style of the map a little bit more. So lots of cool things we can do here with this map chart. And of course, remember you can drag around. So if you want to go over and see a different area, then you can definitely do that as well. Now, the difference between this map chart and a filled map chart is that the filled map chart doesn't display bubbles. Instead, the entire country will be shaded if there's values for it in your data. So let me just make this chart a bit smaller. I'm just going to drag that in like so. And let's click on filled map chart. Now, once again, we need to go in and add in our different locations. Now, I will say that my data doesn't really suit this filled map chart, and I'll show you why. In the location, I'm going to add my countries in again. So it's going to find those countries and notice that it's shading them in as opposed to showing me a bubble representation. And if we go to our formatting, let's go to uh, data colors. The default color there is blue. So let's do this in a dark purple color as well. And I'm going to say show all because this time I actually do want to shade the countries in different colors. So we'll keep Australia as purple. Let's do Austria as a lighter purple. And let's just do some crazy colors so they really stand out. So we'll have blue here. And I'm just going to go through and change all of the colors for these different countries. And there we go. So that now makes it a little bit easier to see. Once again, I can use my map control. So I'm going to turn off auto zoom and turn on my zoom buttons. And once again, this is going to allow me to zoom in to a specific region. So let's zoom back in on Europe because this is the easiest one to see. And there we go. Let's take a look at our map styles. Well, again, we have the same map style, so I'm going to make this one aerial as well. And then we have similar options below to add things like a title, background, border, shadow, tooltip. So that is the main difference between these two different charts. One shows as bubbles for a representation of the values, whereas the other one just shades the country. But both of them are really effective and really nice ways of displaying geographical data. The next visualization that can look really effective in your dashboards is the gauge. And it's this little icon here. Now, if you're not sure what the gauge is, you might be able to tell from that very small icon. It's basically an arc with an arrow which shows us KPI information. For example, we might have a target to meet and we want to be able to see in a visualization how close we are to that target. And for this, we're going to do this in a slightly different way. And this is also going to show us how to utilize another skill, and that is how to enter data manually. Now, we briefly touched on this much earlier on in the course, but we're going to do it again so you can see one of the other options you have when it comes to getting data into these visualizations. So the first thing to do here is add the gauge visualization. So let's click it. As always, we're going to get a blank visualization. Now, normally at this stage, I would grab my field codes and start adding them into these value areas. But this time I'm going to use some data that I have stored off in an Excel spreadsheet. So let's jump across to Excel and look at the data that we're going to use. So here I have a very small data set and you'll find this data set in the course files folder to download. It's just displaying some year information, 2016 to 2019. We then have a minimum and a maximum value showing as a percentage. We have our target KPI, our actual KPI, and what that represents in terms of sales revenue. Now, in order to display our data in a gauge, we need to have all of this information because what this gauge is going to do, if I move my Excel spreadsheet to the side, you can see here we have this arc. And effectively, I want four of these gauges running across the top of my dashboard, and each one is going to represent one of these four years. So if we start with 2016, the minimum value needs to be specified. So basically, what is the value going to be at the bottom on the left hand side of this gauge? Well, it's going to be zero. 
And then we need to specify a maximum value, which is effectively going to be on the right hand side of this gauge. So I'm going to set that to 200% and you can set that to whatever you want. And then we have our target KPI. So I'm going to set that at 100%, which is basically going to be somewhere in the middle of this gauge. And then we have the actual KPI. So this first one, for example, 65%, I would expect this gauge to show that at about this level on the gauge because we have zero over here, 200 over here, and our target 100 is going to be in the middle. So straight away, we're going to be able to see how close to our target we actually are. And the reason why I set this maximum value to 200% as opposed to 100 is because sometimes we've exceeded our KPI. So our target is 100%, but in 2018 and 2019, we exceeded that KPI 110% and 140%. So I'm still going to be able to plot these nicely on this gauge visual. So now that we have this small data set, it's time to get this into this visualization. And what we're going to do here is we're going to enter the data manually. So we don't have to always import our data in. If it's a very small data set, we could create our own table and then use that in the visualization. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select all of this data, control A and control C to copy. We're going to go back to our visualization and we're going to enter this data manually. So up on the home tab into enter data. And we were in here before, but if you remember last time, we didn't actually enter anything into the table. We just wanted to create a blank table. This time we are going to add our data. So make sure that you're clicked in that first cell, control V to copy that data in. I'm getting a warning message. Power BI is telling me that the first row of data that I've pasted has been promoted to column headers. And that's actually perfect. That is exactly what I want. The last thing to do here is to rename this table. So I'm going to call this 2016 to 2019 KPIs. And I'm going to load that in. So once it's loaded, we should be able to see that new table over on the right hand side. And there it is. If I expand this out, I can then see all of my different column headings. Now, I always like to jump across to data and just check to make sure this data looks as I want it to look. And I can immediately see here that I need to do some work on this formatting. So these should be percentages. So let's select this first column just here. Change that to percentage. I'm also going to change the data type because it's saying it's a decimal number. I'm going to change that to whole number. And let's take these decimal places down. I'm going to do exactly the same for these other columns. Let's change to hold number and change that data type. Let's change it to a percentage and take those decimal places down. And I'm going to do the same for the other two columns. And then the final column here for sales revenue, let's just select that. And we're going to change that to a currency. We're going to use pounds. And yep, I think that looks good. So let's jump back to our visualization. So now that we have this information, we can use it to build our gauge. Now I want this first gauge to show the KPIs for 2016 only. And if I just start adding fields in, it's basically going to use all of the data. So 2016 to 2019. So in order for this to work, we need to apply some filtering first so that we're just using the 2016 data. So for this, we're going to use this filters pane just here. And we haven't really used this much so far in this course. So this is going to give you a nice little introduction. So let's expand it out. This is where we can apply filters to our visualization. So the first thing I need to tell this filters area is which field I want to filter on. Well, I want to filter on the year. So I'm going to go to my KPIs table, grab the year field and drop that into filters on this visual. I'm then going to go into basic filtering and then I can select the year I'm interested in. So I want to see information only for 2016 in this visual. Now that I've done that, I can collapse that pane back up again and I can go through and start adding my fields to these areas. So my value is going to be my actual KPI. Let's drop that in. My minimum value, well, my minimum value is 0%. And you should see that now displayed on the left hand side of this gauge. 
I'm going to grab max and drop that into maximum value. And now you can see 200% displayed on the right hand side of the gauge. Add target value. We're going to grab our target KPI and drop that in. And there is our 100% target line. And then we have our tool tips at the bottom. So remember, if we hover over, this is going to show us the actual KPI and the target. But maybe I want to see what that represents in sales revenue. So I'm going to grab the sales revenue field, drop that into tool tips. Now when I hover over, I can see what the monetary value is relating to that KPI. And that is pretty much it. We can then go through and start formatting. So if we go to data colors, I can change the fill to match my theme. So let's go for a dark purple. I'm going to keep my target on dark blue and I've already got my data labels turned on here. So I can choose the units that I want to display those in and change things like the text size and the font. I maybe want to add a background so I could come in here and make that background gray or maybe a completely different color so that everything stands out. I can go in and modify the title, so on and so forth. So you would format this the same way that you would any other visualization. And I think I'm actually going to change that background because I really don't like that purple. So let's change that back to white. So what I could do then is maybe resize this visualization just a little bit and then I could copy and paste it and then change the filter that I'm using. So this one needs to show the information for 2017. I'm going to expand out my filters. Let's click on year and this time we're going to swap this from 2016 to 2017. And it is as simple as that. So very quick just to copy and paste these across and display the data for all of the different years. And what you might find is if you have four of these running across the top, you don't want a title for each of them. You can turn off the title and use the text box on your home tab just to give it a universal title. But we'll talk more about that when we go into designing dashboards. But that is it. That is how you create gauge visualizations. Since the last lesson, I've done a little bit of arranging on this page. So I've copied over the map chart and also the gauge charts from the map charts page and just simply copied them onto the summary page. I've resized them and moved them around a little bit just so they fit on the page a little bit better. But I've left a gap down the side because this is what we're going to be working with in this lesson. It's now time for us to add some interactivity into our Power BI report. And we're going to do this using slices and filters. And again, slices might be something that you're familiar with in an application like Excel. We often use them to filter charts and pivot charts. And they're a really nice visual way to help users extract from your report exactly the information that they're interested in. So let me show you how we can add some slices to our report page. Now, once again, we're going to use a visualization for this. And the slicer visualization is this one just here, the one with the little funnel icon on it. So let's click to add a slicer. And as usual, it is blank until we add some data to it. So what we can basically do here is we can use any of the fields that exist in our data as a filter or a slicer for this data. And you can have multiple slicers in your report. So I'm going to add a few of them just so you can see how these work. Now, the first slicer that I'm going to add, if I go over to my fields, I think I'm going to add a slicer or a filter for the products. So from the products table, let's grab the product field and drag and drop that into the field area. And now you can see what I get. So in this slicer, I now have all of the products in a big, long list. And this list is pretty long. In fact, it goes off the edge of the page. Now, the idea behind this is that users can simply click to select the information that they're interested in and the charts on this page will update. Now, bear in mind these gauges at the top, I don't really want those to update because those are KPIs based on if we've met a target or not. So I don't particularly want those changing, which is quite handy because they're not actually linked to these slicers because I entered the data manually. However, if I was to select a product from this list, when I select it, if you look at all of the other charts on this page, you'll see that they will change. So let's select BLT sandwich 
and you can see everything is changing as I select. If I want to select multiple options, I can hold down my control key and I can select multiple products and that will reflect in the charts on this report page. To clear your slices and set everything back to the default, just click the eraser icon to clear your selections. Now, as I mentioned, this list of products that I have in here is pretty long and I don't really want to have to be scrolling up and down looking for the particular product that I want. This also makes this slicer not particularly space efficient. If I want to add more slices underneath, this is going to get cumbersome very quickly. So what you can do here is change this from a list to a drop down menu. And we do that simply by clicking this little drop down arrow and then we can select the type of slicer that we want. So I'm going to change this to drop down. And now I have something which is a lot neater and cleaner to look at. I can then click the drop down and then go in and select what I want to filter by. Now I'm going to do a bit of resizing here because that is a bit wide and it's going off the page. Let's move that in to about there. Perfect. Let's now do some formatting just to make this feel like it's part of this report. I'm going to jump over to my formatting tools and I'm not going to do much formatting here, but one thing I am going to do is I'm going to expand the slicer header and I'm going to say that I want a bottom only outline. That's going to give me this line underneath the heading. And what I tend to like to do on reports and dashboards is use color to group together these slices. So if I have slices that are all from the products table, I might give the underline the same color. So to change the color of the underline, you have to do that from a different area. Let's go to general. I'm actually going to change the weight of that to two and we're going to change the outline color to purple. And there we have our first slicer. I'm going to add another one for the category. Now, as with anything in Power BI, I don't have to go back in and add a slicer visualization from scratch. I can simply copy and paste the existing slicer. So select it, control C, control V, and that's going to give you a copy. And I'm going to place that directly under the product slicer. Now all I need to do is go over to my fields pane, click the cross to remove product, and I'm going to replace it with category. So now when I click the drop down, I can filter by category as well. Now this is also part of the products table, so I'm going to leave that underline as purple because these are both from the same table. Let's do the same process. I'm going to copy control C, control V to paste. Let's drag this one underneath. And this time we're going to use a field from the locations table. So I'm going to grab location and drag and drop that into field. And now I have a big long list of locations that I can select from. Now this is from a different table, so let's change that line color to separate it from the other two. So into formatting, all I need to do here is go to general and change the outline color. I'm going to change this to, let's do a nice blue color, like so. Now one other thing that's worth pointing out here is if you have a drop down menu that has a very long list of data like this one just here, you can help your users out a little bit by adding the ability to search through this list so they can easily find what they're looking for. So what we can do here is click on the slicer, click the three dots and you can see the first option we have in the menu is search. So if we click that, now when they go to the drop down, they get this little search bar at the top here so they can then type in exactly what it is that they're looking for. So that can be a super helpful little thing. Now the final slicer that I'm going to add to this page is a date slicer because there is a slight difference with slicers that deal with dates. So let's copy our slicer, control C, control V. Let's position it. Let's go to our field pane, remove location. I'm going to go to the dates table and I'm going to grab year, drag and drop that into field. Let's go to the format tab and let's just change the outline color because that is coming from a different table. And we're going to change this one to pink. So when I click this, you'll see that I can filter on my dates 2016 to 2019. 
Now, because Power BI recognizes that these are dates, if I click the little drop down, you'll see that aside from list and drop down, I now get between, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So if I'm looking for something specifically between two dates, I can then use this slider. So if I'm only interested in things that are between 2017 and 2019, I can just use that slider. And you won't see those options on any of these other slices. They are very specific to date slices. So just be aware of that. Now I'm going to switch this one back to drop down, but that is pretty much it. We can now go in and we can select all of the options that we're interested in. So we can select a few different products. I can then go to location and select a few different locations. And I can then go to the year that I'm interested in. So let's say 2018. And there we go. My cards, my column chart and my map chart have all updated to reflect my slicer selections. So I just want to end this section by just briefly showing you some of the other design elements that you can change in your report. Because so far when we've been applying formatting, it's very much been visualization based. We've selected a particular visualization on the report, and then we've used our format area to apply different formatting settings. But you do have other options on the ribbons that allow you to make more universal changes to the look and feel of your report. So let's look at some of them now. If we jump up to the view tab, you'll see in the first group, we can change the overall theme and themes are a great way to very quickly apply formatting, different colors, different font styles with the click of one button. So if we click the drop down here, we have access to quite a few themes in this gallery. And I'll leave it to you to go through some of these and experiment with the different colors. Now, for example, I'm going to apply this one just here, Tidal. Now, when I click this, you can see what that looks like. Instantly, a little bit more interesting, and I haven't had to format every single element individually. So themes are a great way to quickly change the look and feel of your report. If we go across to the Insert ribbon, we also have some other options in here. So for example, if we want to add a new page, we can add a blank page or a duplicate page from here. Remember, you can also do that by clicking the plus at the bottom where we have our tabs. We can add new visuals from here as opposed to clicking on the visualization in the visualizations pane. And then we can also add different AI visuals. Now, I'm not really going to go into these in this particular lesson, but one that I will point out to you is this one just here, this smart narrative, because this is quite a nice way of auto generating a summary of the data that you have on your report. So if you kind of want a couple of paragraphs of text, which gives an overview of the data you're displaying, this is what smart narrative does. Now, I don't have a great deal of blank space on this page, so it might be a little bit difficult to see. But if I click Smart Narrative, it opens up this little text box and take a look at what we have in here. So it's given me a summary of my report. It's telling me that beverages had the highest total profit and then it's given me the value followed by food and pastries. Total profit and total cost are positively correlated with each other, so on and so forth. So this is something that's quite nice that you can add to your report page if you just want a quick written summary of what your report is showing. So I quite like that little option. And then in the group on the end, we have different elements that we can add. So if you want to add a text box to the page, then you have that option just here. So it might be that I want to add a title for this report at the top here. I would do that using a text box. And this brings me on to my other little tip here, and that is grouping your objects together in order to be able to move them as a whole. So currently, if I wanted to add a title to this report, I don't really have any room. I haven't allowed any space at the top. So I might want to resize these visuals and move them down a little bit. And I don't really want to be selecting them all individually, moving them down and resizing them. That's not going to be very time efficient. I want a way of doing this all together. So what we can do here is we can go to the view menu and in the show panes area, we have a selection pane. And this allows us to 
do things like change the layer order, but it also allows us to select all of the elements on our page. So if I select the top one, go down to the last one, hold down shift, it's going to select everything on the page. What I can then do is right click my mouse and group all of these elements together in one big element. I can then use my resize handles to resize everything as a whole. And if I want to maintain the aspect ratio, I just need to make sure I hold down shift as I resize. So let's make this quite a bit smaller. And I'm then going to move the group as a whole a bit further down the page so that I have a bit of space at the top for a title. And I think I'm going to drag that out a little bit as well. So there we go. Now, if you want to go back to editing these elements individually, you must make sure that you right click and ungroup them before you continue. So now that I have some space, let's go back to insert and we can add a text box. And I'm just going to give my report a title. And we'll call this mega coffee sales analysis 2016 to 2019. And this is just a regular text box, which we can then format. So let's select the text. I'm going to leave it on Sego UI because I quite like that. But let's make this font a little bit bigger. I'm going to change that to 24 and let's move that up to the top of the page. Now, if I want to make any other changes to this text box, such as maybe removing that background fill, Notice that now over on the right hand side, I have a format text box pane, which gives me access to a lot of the similar options that we have when we're formatting a visualization. So let's turn the background off and then I'm going to change this font color to white. And let's also make it bold. Why not? Click away and there we go. Some other things that I can add here are different types of buttons. Now, if we click the drop down, I can add things like a left arrow, a right arrow, a reset, a back and information, help Q&A, so many different things that we can add. So, for example, if I click on back, this is going to give me this little back arrow just here. Now, I'm going to place this over at the side of my report. And once again, we have the format button pane open on the right hand side to allow us to customize this button. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the background off and then we're going to change the icon to white and I'm going to turn on text as well and make that font color white. And the text that I'm going to add here is the word back. Let's make that text a little bit bigger. And yep, yeah, that is it. And the idea behind buttons like this is that you can press control and click them. And this one, for example, is going to jump you back to the previous page in this report. So if I now click back, it's going to take me to the other page that I have, which is essentially the map charts page. So things like buttons can really help you with navigation and giving users information and help. And then the final two options we have, we can add some shapes to our report. This is probably fairly self-explanatory. If we want to add something like a block arrow, we can do that. We can add rectangles, circles to add to the design, and we can also add our own images to our report. So definitely some additional really cool features in there, which are going to help you elevate the overall look and feel of your report and make it super visual and easy for people to understand. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.